This is the PEP-8 assembler and simulator as provided by the author Warford for the book computer systems. We'll be using this to do machine code testing. Let's familiarize ourselves with the layout of the simulator. We'll be using this for the next couple of units dealing with assembly language. But at this point we're strictly dealing with machine or object code. Uh, we have a typical menu at the top, pull down and that will let us uh, do our file saving, editing, loading. We have a normal cut, paste, redo, undo. Next is the toolbar. We'll only be using some of these uh, this week. The other weeks we'll be using them when they apply more to the assembly language. So create a new one, uh, open up an old one, save it, and these are the undo and the redo, the same as Control Z, Control Y shortcuts, which you might be familiar with from Word. Uh, a nice help. Now the next three, the assemble, run source, start debugging source, we will not use because that applies to the assembly language code. In fact, if you try to run from that, it'll wipe out the contents of the uh, uh, machine code, which we don't want to do. The stop um, terminates the program if you're running it under the debugger. The next three are very useful. This controls the layouts of the panels on the screen. The far left one concentrates strictly on the uh, source code, the object code, and the assembly listing. The middle one adds information about the state of the simulator. You can view the registers, the input, the output. And the far right adds a memory dump. This is up here is very useful. It allows us to convert decimal to, to binary, hex, and ASCII. And the way it works is the first one is the decimal equivalent. So if I put in capital A, which is 65 in, in decimal, it's the equivalent in hex using the 0x as the same as in Java or C to specify a hex value, which in binary is that value. And that's a capital A. So a capital B, if I enter it here, changes to 66, which is 42, and so forth. So you can move back and forth between decimal, hex, and binary by just using this little converter. It has nothing to do with the uh, simulation or the code itself. It's just a, a, a quick way to look things up. Fifth field, which is grayed out, is the PEP8 equivalent. We'll be entering the code here, and we'll be dealing with machine code. The machine code will be entered in as hex values, specifying bytes as two uh, hex values. So. Uh, we'll not use the source code panel, but use the object code. So I'm actually going to click in between the two and pull up until I just have object code there. I will not be using the assembly code. Uh, that will be used for a later unit. All right, let's say we want to print to the screen the message RSU. If we're going to use direct mode, that means we have to store the letters R, S, and U in memory and we have to figure out where that is going to be. So if we're going to print three letters, that will take three different instructions, and those will be three byte instructions, and they'll be followed by a stop instruction, which uh, will be a unary instruction. So that'd be three times three plus one, or 10. The actual character will appear in memory location 10, but as we write things in hex, that'll be memory location A. So 51000A. And then 51000B, 51000C, the stop instruction 00, and then the actual characters. I'm not sure what the value is of capital R, so I'll put it in the box. And I can see the R in hex is 52. That means that uh, the letter S must be 53, and then U must be 55. The assembly language instructions for this simulator always conclude with an end of file marker of ZZ. So that tells the loader where the object code terminates. If you uh, omit it, is easy, it'll be an error. Notice that I have them grouped with a single space in between them. If you neglect the space between the, the groupings, 
the loader will pull it into memory, but you'll get in, uh, incorrect results because it will skip one of the bytes. Once I have it, uh, I'm ready to go. I pull up the build and I load it into memory. So now I have here in the memory dump my program. Now 51 goes to 51000A, 51000B. So let's look at how we read this. The far left column going down is telling me the uh, memory address and they're in groups of eight. So this is zero 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 one zero zero two three four five six seven eight nine and then that would be A B C D E F and then after F is one zero. So this is giving me the addresses plus the column number tells me the memory. Now the far right columns that we see here those are the ASCII equivalents of the raw bytes. It doesn't know what's code and what's data, so it's just translating everything into ASCII. But of course, not all ASCII is printable, so 00, zero is it showing it as a period because it's not a valid uh, ASCII. 51 it claims is a Q. Let's just check that. Uh, Q is 51 hex, so that's correct. This is giving you a snapshot of what's going on in the memory. Now, once I've loaded into the memory, I can run it. Do not run it as a source, but run it as an object. And then I can see in the out output panel, the word RSU appears. Now that just ran the program in one go, and it's important to be able to single step through the code to understand what happens when things go wrong. Uh, we need a way of debugging it, and we have that option of single stepping and watching it execute one instruction at a time. So under the build menu I can say start debugging object. Uh, notice how the single step and resume and these are all grayed out but if I click on start debugging object this is no longer grayed out. It's marking in that it's active with the blue on the CPU and now it highlights under the memory dump what is the next instruction to be executed. So the program counter is at zero, so it's loaded in 500A, a single step. This tells me what it did. So it did a character out, direct, memory location A. So it printed in memory location A the letter 52, which was an R. Single step, prints an S, prints a U, and then stops. Okay, so the debugger is extremely useful for finding out when things go wrong, what's going on inside the uh, simulator. Now I haven't saved this program and that's why it's showing it as an asterisk. I can save it, save object as, and RSU pep object. And it's there. You could also save it as a text file. You could uh, use TextPad or Notepad++ or whatever you like and paste your uh, assembly language or object code in here. The difference um, is to make certain that you have a space in between each of the bytes or it won't run right. Okay, let's do a more complicated example um, using one from the book. All the examples in the book are here under the help menu under examples and we'll do uh, 435 figure and the, it's just straight from the textbook and in this one you add two numbers together with uh, the number 5 and the number 3 and sum them and then output it as a character now it's doing character out so this will only work if the resulting number is a single uh, single digit so it can add 5 and 3 here and produce an 8 but if you tried to add um, six and eight and you won't get fourteen out but that's okay it's just illustrating it so I'll click copy to object and it fills into the object code all the individual bytes that's just taken right from the book load it and then 
adds 5, 3 together and produces 8. Or I can start debugging it, and that'll work one at a time. So it loads from memory location 1, 1, which we see here. Remember that if we do a load, it loads two bytes. So 0, 0, 0, 5 will be pulled into the accumulator. And that's what it's done. It's read location uh, 1, 1 and 1, 2 and produce the number 5, which is in the accumulator. And the next one is it's going to do an add operation with memory location 1, 3. And there's location 1, 3. So it'll add 5 and 3 together, and we should see the accumulator should then hold the number 8, which it does. The next operation um, is going to do an OR with memory location to 1-0. Uh, pulls that up and stores it back into uh, memory location 1-2. And that, you can see, is highlighted in red. Whenever any of the memory locations change, it shows it in red. So it now will uh, store the result back, well it has already stored it back, uh, character 38, which is the ASCII equivalent of like 8 num number. So printing it out and the next step, character out, memory location 38, and it's the end of it. Just make certain that you put a space in between each of them and that you terminate with the ZZ. If you omit the ZZ and you try and do a load, you'll see load fail. It won't work. It doesn't care about case, so you can put A1 and the program will run just the same.